When it comes to recitals, no one could accuse Jeremy Denk of being more concerned about style than content. There has always been a clear rationale and rigor to his programs, and more than a whiff of didacticism about them. Denk is artist-in-residence at Milton Court this season. After devoting the first of his appearances there to Mozart's last five piano sonatas, he followed it up with a guided tour around variation form in an all-day sequence of three recitals, with the help of violinist Karen Gomayo, cellist Julian Steckel and mezzo-soprano Miasha Brueger gossman Each program had its own theme. After variations on death in the morning, there was variations on virtuosity in the afternoon, before a final variations on heartbreak and hope. The repertory covered was certainly diverse. Denk performed 19 works altogether, spanning five centuries, from the early 17th to the present day. He mixed authentic piano pieces with movements from piano trios and violin sonatas, as well as unlikely arrangements of Bach and Monteverdi. There was even a song made famous by Nina Simone but based on an aria from La Traviata. Yet it all added up to rather less than the sum of its multifarious parts. Some major works were included, the second recital ended with a slightly perfunctory account of Schumann's Etudes Symphoniques, the third with Beethoven's final piano sonata, Opus 111 in C minor, but the overall impression was strangely insubstantial. There was also the nagging feeling that had Denk opted to play fewer, larger-scale pieces, the whole event might have cohered more convincingly. That's whether or not you buy into his ideas on why composers have employed variation form, of which the suggestion that it can be about romantic loss or farewell seems to me the most contentious of all. A more compact program might have attracted a bigger audience, too. The Sunday afternoon turnout at Milton Court was hugely disappointing for a pianist of Denk's profile. But there were highlights, not only Denk's climactic performance of Opus 111, but also Gomayo's brilliant dispatch of Votom Souvenirs d'Amérique, an outrageously brevere set of variations on Yankee Doodle and Steckel's idiomatic and understated account with Denk of Mendelssohn's Variations Concertantes, Opus 17. There were also new works. If the piano writing in Timo Andres' Zafiro Torna, based on the tripping shack on bass of Monteverdi's Madrigal of the same name, seemed overwrought and unconvincing, John Adams' I Still Play, written earlier this year to mark the retirement of Robert Hurwitz after his 30 years as head of none such records, was a charmingly perfect miniature, with echoes of Ravel and Bill Evans as well as nods towards Bach. Alice Sarah Ott explored the wonderland of Greek's little fantasies. Photograph Stefan Hodereth Red Ferns two nights later, in maximum contrast to Denk's discursive marathon, Alice Sarah Ott devoted her recital at St. John's to only two composers, Grieg and Liszt, yet tellingly conveyed a much stronger sense of coherence and meaningful cross actions than his self-conscious juxtapositions had done. Twelve of Grieg's lyric pieces and his hefty ballade in G minor made up the first half Liszt's sonata in B minor occupied the second. It's a program that Ott has toured extensively and, as she revealed from the platform, this was the last time she was planning to play it. What Ott described as the wonderland of Grieg's little fantasies was contrasted with the underworld of the sonata, and it worked wonderfully well. The selection of lyric pieces contrasted familiar numbers, such as Butterfly and Wedding Day at Trollhagen, with less well-known ones. It also mixed pieces from early in Grieg's career, when his music still bore the imprint of Mendelssohn, Chopin and Schumann, with later ones in which his voice was much more personal, distinctive, and at times experimental. Ott's presentation was energized and brightly lit. She never looked for profundity where there was none to be found, and emphatically placed the musical weight in her Grieg sequence on the Ballade, Opus 24, which is a set of variations on a Norwegian folk song. The fierceness with which the climax of the Menorchi variations was presented, turned out to be a foretaste of the Liszt Sonata, which was unflinchingly raw and direct, with snarling bass lines and razor-edged chords. The performance did indeed conjure up the kind of threatening world Ott had spoken of, but it was presented with such technical brilliance, so crisply and cleanly articulated, that nothing was overbearing or over-insistent, but always dramatic and absorbing. If this really was the last time Ott is going to perform the sonata in public for a while, it was a pretty startling way to say goodbye to it.